Yo, what's going on guys, Savage here. In today's video, we're gonna be diving in and I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to get better at mouse and keyboard relatively quickly. Now, most players, when they go in blind, it takes them months and months and months to kind of figure everything out. And some players even just quit, drop the mouse and keyboard and go back to the sticks. So in this video, we're gonna be covering some hot topics. I will have all of the timestamps in the description below. So if you guys, as you're scrolling through the video, if y'all wanna click certain aspects that you're struggling with, you can do so without watching the entire video. And look, the main reason why I'm making these videos is because I know how much of a struggle it is to go out there and get better at mouse and keyboard. I was a mouse and keyboard player for a very long time. I switched over to PlayStation Xbox for a pretty decent amount of time as well. And then just a year, year and a half ago, I decided to come back to the PC world. And it was kind of a struggle and a learning curve going back to what I used to be really good at. But before we get into the video, if you do enjoy the content, make sure you leave a like on the video. Also, if you learned something new, make sure you subscribe to the channel today. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the video. All right, guys, so looking at the keyboard real quick, it's pretty simple. I love to remove the actual number pad on the right hand side. That way it's easier for me to game. Completely up to you guys if you want to do that. Um, it's a personal preference of mine. Because of my low DPI, I do like to whip my mouse back and forth extremely hard, and I need as much space as I can possibly get. Now, of course, I like to go ahead and forget about keys Y and N all the way to the right-hand side, because again, you really don't need those unless you're talking about MMOs. Let's go ahead and address the number keys. That's usually for swapping weapons. But of course, I'm gonna use my mouse wheel because it's faster and I don't have to remove my hands from the actual movement keys, WASD, which is extremely important in these high paced BRs that we mostly play. Also, I love to camp my keyboard. That way, as you guys can see here, my hand just kind of fits perfectly. Some people like more of a cant, some people like less of a cant. Just utilize what you want based off the shape of your hand. Some people's fingers will be different shape than others, longer in certain spots. So again, just cant it that way it flows you watch players like symphony his keyboard's completely sideways i don't know how he does it but he does and as you guys can see here because of the placement my pinky is easily able to switch from shift and control and of course space bar is pretty pretty uh self-explanatory now talking about q and e key i love to utilize the buttons on my mouse for that that way again i don't have to remove my fingers from the WASD keys. As you can see here, my Logitech G502 has side buttons, which gives me the ability to hit my lethals and my tacticals on command. And again, the purpose of this is to have your movement keys always on the ready. I do not like removing my middle finger from anything, nor do I like removing my ring finger from anything. My index finger, however, is a lot more versatile. I think most people's index fingers should probably be the most versatile finger on their hand. And as you guys can see here, I can move relatively easy from E, R, F, and D, um, as well as C. So like in Warzone, when I'm slide canceling, it's extremely easy for me to hit the slide cancel um, because of my pinky and my index finger. Now, if you go ahead and you flatten your hand, what do your fingers cover that you really cannot see with the exception of the WASD keys? Yes, you're right. We're talking about the Z, X, Windows, and Alt key. Now, instantly remove the Windows key from your gaming profile. Depending on the mouse you use, there may be a software where you can unbind that key completely. I have it unbound. That way I don't accidentally hit the Windows key when I'm in the middle of playing because that's the worst shit in the world. And personally, preference-wise for me, I don't use Alt either because again, look at the finger placement. It's going to be extremely awkward for my index finger to actually go down to the alt key and hit it so again i don't even use that key all right guys so for the purpose of the video i want to go ahead turn the camera a little weird angle and talk to you guys a little bit about game replacement when it comes to mouse and keyboard now as you guys can see here i do have my sneak energy guys make sure you try it out it's one of the greatest energy supplements especially for gamers code savage make sure you guys just buy the sample pack try it out let me know what you guys think in the comment section below this is by far my favorite energy supplement without a doubt all right so when it comes to gamer placement let's go ahead and move this mice that's for my streaming pc now what i like to do again is camp my keyboard you won't be able to see it but we did cover that already. Look at how much room I have for my mouse pad. So I do like to game on 400 DPI normally. I did tear my biceps, so I'm going through that repair process. So I've been running about 800 DPI, which still requires a little movement. I think this is basically what 800 is to the max. Um, when I'm at 400, you also see me whip this thing back and forth. It's absolutely ridiculous. All right, so there's different placements. A lot of people like to play right here and just kind of keep their wrists, especially for risk gamers. Not a big deal if you're a risk gamer, you can kind of position your hand wherever you want to go. What I like to do, especially being an arm gamer, is I'll usually wear a sleeve. That way the mouse pad doesn't irritate my arm and I'll move my arm up. I like to keep my elbow on the table. That way when I move, it's not hanging off because if your elbow is hanging off, you're putting a lot of tension right here. And also when you're like this, your wrist is doing some weird thing to where there's a gap between the wrist and the table. It's not really what you want. One, that'll hurt your wrist. You can get carpal tunnel and other things like that and really damage it. So again, I like to 
have my elbow on the table that way everything is flush and hitting the desk and i can kind of just feel the mouse pad as i move and glide with that also it does correct gamer posture too so if you're a controller player a lot of controller players will sit up forward like this and, and they'll be gaming and that's fine but in turn um our posture gets messed up trust me i live that life i understand so the benefit to again having your elbows on the table is you're forcing your body to the desk to literally where i can't fit my hand in and with that your seat is actually lifted up so not just for aim and accuracy and well better life on mouse and key but also for posture and other aspects like that because with bad posture you will get fatigued in gaming if you guys are really trying to hit this hard you're trying to get practice and you're trying to go pro you're trying to do this trying to do that you're gonna wanna be easy on your body, that way you can sit at the desk for long extended periods of time. Now, I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you guys, but again, I wanna give you guys an easy video to watch, that way you guys can take this step by step and really just become better mouse and keyboard players. Guys, just from simply practicing in the games that you're playing or practicing in the AIM software, which we will discuss in this video as well, you guys can jump your skill level within a week, a month, six months, just depending on, again, how much you actually practice all right here we are in my favorite program i use this almost every day again because of my bicep tear i haven't been able to use it as much as i want to i'm just starting to get mobility back thankfully um but it is a software i highly recommend and it's free on steam now this video is not sponsored by aim labs there are other great programs out there like kovac and also some in-game aim training software um, that valorant has apex has and now the new halo as well and of course the list goes on so guys whatever you prefer let's get in there and practice try to do different drills and increase your aim accuracy precision flicking and tracking now speaking of which as you guys can see over here under skills we do have flicking tracking speed precision cognition and perception i'm gonna go ahead and move my camera for this so you guys can see it because this is a lot easier so as you guys can see here with flicking there are a lot of drills you guys can partake in and it's up to you this program also grades your aim and tells you what you need to work on after you're doing a drill if your movement's too slow to recommend certain drills if your movement's great but your accuracy is a little low and you're hitting the edge of the targets it will also recommend programs to help with precision again going down to precision right so spider shots one of my favorite spider shot increased my flicking skills dramatically and i give a lot of credit to aim labs for actually making me a better player probably jumped my skill level three times the amount that it was just one year ago these drills are not lengthy they're only 60 seconds i recommend doing 30 minutes a day before you start gaming that way you guys can get warmed up you don't have to worry about wasting your time in matches trying to get warmed up also i don't recommend training for more than an hour it can be very fatiguing and kind of take the fun out of it. And again, there's other tasks you can do, um, but I mean, sky's the limit. This is one of my favorites as well. Multi-shot, grid shot, doesn't really seem to be huge necessity, but it is a lot of fun and it does have some benefits to it. Tracking is probably one of the most important aspects in most BRs, mostly because movement speed, again, talking about Apex, Fortnite, um, Warzone, and new games that will be coming out, movement speed is becoming more important and more utilized. And in turn, you're gonna need to learn how to track people moving quickly. And as you guys can see right here, it starts you off very slow, very basic, just tracking the target. There's different skill levels to it. Um, you can even have strafe shot where you're shooting the target. It's just sidestepping. You're having to learn how to track that target in real time. Circle shot where it goes all the way around you. And again, the list goes on. The amount of training drills that they have in here is absolutely crazy. Then of course you have speed, precision, cognition, and all of those will, and it's pretty self-explanatory if you guys end up downloading this program. But when it comes to cognition, just a thought process, trying to analyze certain things really fast. That way you can make a decision quickly, right? Most people in BRs, they struggle making decisions and kind of spotting things. When you're trying to scan for targets, you're not really sure what to look for. This does help you kind of just relax your eyes and look for certain things. All right, so we're gonna be jumping into Apex, just one of the many games that has a built-in aim software. Now, I was gonna go ahead and load up every single game, but that's, there's no necessity for that. There's no reason for that. It's all basically the exact same concept. Loading certain games, Apex, Valorant, Warzone, utilize your favorite weapons and practice controlling the recoil, also being snappy and hitting targets. Thankfully, Apex has a very good aim training software built into it. So you guys are on controller and you decide, you know what, Savage, I watched your video, but mouse and keyboard's not for me. You guys can still practice getting better on controller using this as well. All right, guys, as you guys can see, we have a built-in aim program. And again, you can use this on mouse and keyboard, which is the purpose of this video, or even controller, it doesn't matter. But again, if you guys wanna just learn to flick from target to target to target, you guys can just do so just by doing this. But I do not recommend you guys just jump into an aim program and try to be as fast as possible. You guys need to perfect the art of aiming and flicking and tracking. You need to perfect it. Don't just jump and try to become Shroud and one of the best players ever. Start slowly, patient, breathe, because if you guys try to hit it hard, can take you guys longer to learn what i mean by that a lot of times people would jump into aim training myself included when i first started 
And they're like, you know what, bro? I just watched Stroud finish the game and I'm just gonna pow, 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 pow. And you end up missing most of shots because you're just trying too much. And again, it's just not worth it. So guys, just practice slowly hitting the target, going from one area to another, master the recoil, master the flicks, and so on and so forth. Patience, right? This is not a race. You're not racing to become the best player. You want to be the best player. Take your time. There's no race, bro. We got a long life. Also using aim training like this, you guys can perfect your DPI. Mine right now is really loose with this game. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and lower it. So now I have a more strict DPI and lowering your DPI, lowering your sensitivity, again, requires more movement with your arm, but in turn, you guys can be more precise. It's gonna be a little bit more exhausting. You'll have to develop an endurance in your arm to be able to do that. Um, but again, there's a better precision with it. That way when targets are moving, instead of you just going all over the place because your sensitivity is high and loose and every time he's moving, you're just all over the place, you're more slow and controlled, right? That way you can always go back to the head, always. With a looser sensitivity, as you guys can see right here, I'm not moving my whole arm anymore. Now I'm just moving my wrist. And in turn, if an enemy's starting to have some decent movement and I need to track them, and as you guys can see right here, when I try to make a smooth line, it's not really that smooth. It's more of like a roller coaster, like an audio wave, right? As opposed to this, because again, it's a stricter DPI. I'm able to have a more precise line to flick on the enemies. Now, the reason this, in my opinion, is better than this is because the less movement that's required means there's going to be more micro correction. For example, if your hands on the mouse at this low DPI and you're sitting here shooting and you sneeze or you do something, you're, it's going to go everywhere. It's going to be absolutely uncontrollable. Um, same thing if you're just like moving your entire body, because a lot of people, when they get in fights, they start moving around and they'll, they'll like lean and things like that. If you're one of those gamers and trust me, I am no hate on that guy. Um, It's going to be extremely hard because again, when you're moving your whole body, you're basically milking the grip. If you guys are actual shooters in real life you know that when you're holding the gun every time you squeeze as a beginner you're actually turning the gun sideways because you're milking the grip right same thing with the mouse every time you do anything your mouse will move the higher your dpi is and the higher sensitivity is even just hitting the trigger if your dpi sensitivity is too high hitting the trigger could actually send your mouse left right down or up because again you're applying pressure to the mouse which again may move it. I know that's a lot of information to take in and I'm trying my best to explain it to you guys. But again, guys, find what's best for you. Again, I do prefer a stricter DPI. That way I'm able to flick on my targets. But again, the process of learning to get better is just slow and controlled. And then as you guys increase your skill level, you can increase your speed and in turn increase your flicks and accuracy overall. Now, when it comes to ADS sensitivity in Warzone, I like mine around 0 0.5, 0 0.6. In this game here, I like it around 0.7. As you guys can see, when I'm out of my sights, it moves relatively well and all i'm doing is this right but when i'm in my sight it doesn't move as far right and i'm doing the same motion so basically i'm going from here which is this line to here which is this line with one smooth motion that's it but again out of my scope let's go back to center that same exact motion i overshoot it three times the amount the purpose in mastering your ads sensitivity and again this is crucial listen up this is the most important part of the video when you guys are in combat and you flick on a target and they're close, far away, whatever, you want to, again, tighten that sensitivity up. That way you can track the enemy a lot smoother as opposed to tracking him like this. So basically you want your sensitivity to be decent enough for movement and for snapping and things like that. But when you're in a fight, their movement's not going to be so crazy that you need to be doing 360s like this at all. So again, tighten up your ADS sensitivity. That way you can track efficiently and beautifully. Now, look, I really hope this was enlightening. I really hope you guys learned something and I hope you guys go out there and practice. Trust me, mouse and keyboard is a learning curve, but I promise you, once you start practicing, once you get out there and get after it, your ceiling of skill level will be increased to levels you never even thought possible. And also the variety of games that PC players have to their disposal. But anyway, guys, if you enjoyed the video, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel today. And if you have some friends out there struggling on mouse and keyboard, some squad mates, whatever the case is, and you want them to improve, make sure you send them this video as well. But again, guys, y'all have a good one. Until next time, keep on improving.